Here's a quick preview of what this widget will look like. It will display our smart device types and their associated smart device IDs. And on click, it will zoom to the particular smart device. So bed, washer, and that's it. So let's get back to coding. In the last lesson, we used the UI items provider interface to add additional toolbar buttons. Like the provide toolbar button items function, the interface also allows us to implement a provide widgets function. So let's start off by adding that function to our class, public provide widgets. And to make things easier, I'm going to navigate to our documentation page and just copy and paste the signature from provide widgets into our code. So the provide widgets function basically augments our widget lists. Again, copy and paste the signature going back to our VS code and paste it right in. Again, change the arrow to a colon, close the brackets and import the necessary classes. Stage panel location, stage panel section, and the abstract widget props. So VS code is again complaining to us that we are not returning the proper type so let's declare that as an empty array of const widgets abstract widget props initialized to an empty array and simply just return an empty array for now just to get rid of that issue. Like the provide toolbar button items function, we need to perform a check to ensure our widget is placed in the right location. So to keep two things simple, I'll only make two checks this time. If the stage ID is equal to default front stage, and this is the one the viewer first uses when we open it, and if our location is on the right, stage panel location dot right, then we add our widget. So the widget is going to be placed to the right of our viewer. So if we check back on our application, this is where our widgets will be appended to right here. So going back. Now let's jump into declaring our widget const widget of type abstract widget props. And this is an object that will take in three parameters. If we go to the abstract widget props definition, you'll notice the only mandatory parameter it needs to take is the get widget content function, but we'll also add an ID since it is recommended to correctly save and restore app layout and a label to keep things descriptive. So going back to our widget, I'll pass in the ID as smart device list widget. The label is going to be smart devices. And as for our function get widget content, it's going to return just a string for now. And that's it. Now we'll push it into our widgets array widgets.push widget save that and let's go back to our code and now we should see our widget to the right of the user interface with the string hello now instead of just a string hello let's return a react component so in order to use react components we need to import react in the react package now changing the return to let's name our component called smart device list widget component. Close that. And we don't have this defined yet. So I'm going to create a new directory under the components called widgets. And in the widgets directory, I'll name it smart device list widget component.tsx. Again, we'll be using React for this, so let's import star as React from the React library and jumping into our export component. Again, the widget component is going to be named smart device list widget component and close. We'll be using React hooks instead of the old components mount methods. So if you're unfamiliar with React hooks, we encourage you to visit reactjs.org and learn about them. I'm going to declare our state variable here, call it smart 
table list and our setter set smart table list initialize to react new state it's going to be an array of jsx dot elements and it'll initialize that to an empty array now jumping into our react dot use effect function this component will update once we retrieve our smart device data so our table component will contain a list of our smart devices so we need to retrieve the corresponding smart device data from our EC SQL query first. We can use the same query we can use in smart device decorator.tsx in function get smart device data. So to prevent some redundant code, I'm going to redeclare this function to be a public static async function. So this function can be called outside of the scope. And we need to redeclare this dot underscore i model since this doesn't belong within the class scope anymore. We can access the I model through a global scope in UI framework dot get I model connection. And this will give us exactly the same thing. It's going to be an exclamation mark because this can't be null at this point and change all our references from this dot get smart device data to at class scope smart device decorator dot get smart device data. We technically don't need to pass the viewport in the constructor anymore, nor do we need the this.imodel variable, but for the sake of this lesson, let's skip some optimizations for now. So going back to our React component, import our new function from dot dot slash decorator slash smart device decorator. And this is the func from class smart device decorator class. And since this function does perform a fetch we'll force an async call to the function. Close this and force the call. And within the async function declare, just like we did in decorator.tsx, our values equals await and then the smart device decorator dot get smart device data function call. Before we loop through the values, we need an empty array of JSX elements. So let's declare that as a const table list. And the type is going to be a JSX.element array as an empty array. Now jump into our for each loop values dot for each. So for each value, we're going to populate our empty table list array. Um, so we're going to push to it table list dot push and then our JSX element our react component and for now I'm just going to create a very simple react component with the row having two column values the first column being the value dot smart device type and the second column being the value dot smart device ID once all the values have been pushed into the table list, we call our setter set smart table list to be equal to our table list array. So the React component will update once table list is fully populated and for good practice and ensure that the effect only runs once will pass an empty list of dependencies. So no variable change uh, will update the React component. Now, finally, let's render our component. Uh, so we'll return a really simple component for now, just a table. And it's going to have a T body with the first two columns being the smart device type, just so we can match our columns up here. And the second is going to be our smart device ID. And underneath the two header row, we're just going to populate with our smart table list. And that should do it for our React component. With the smart device list widget component finally completed, let's import that in our UI items provider. I'm going to import from dot dot slash components slash widgets slash smart device list widget component and the class itself the smart device list widget component. This gets rid of our error. Let's give that a save. 
and go back to our browser. And now we should see our widget populated with the smart device type and smart device ID is the first row header and then the corresponding types and IDs for all our smart devices. It looks bad right now because we don't have any CSS, so let's add some stylistic changes to our code. We have a pretty good smart table CSS class already defined, and this was defined in our previous chapter, decorators and markers. So let's use the same CSS class for our smart table widget. We're going to declare the class name to be the same smart table. Let's give that a save and see what it looks like now. Let's give this a second. And if we expand the widget here, you'll notice they look a lot better with some table borders. The width doesn't yet fully expand to 100%, but we'll fix that and also add some unclick events just so we can match the smart device IDs with the actual smart devices in our viewer. Let's start by adding an on click event for every row. So on click, we'll call a function and we'll just copy and paste the same code we used in the last chapter for our zoom functionality in the markers class. This line right here, the zoom to elements from my model apps view manager, copy that line, go to our function and just paste it right in fix the formatting for this and import iModel app, import our standard view ID, change this dot element here to the values ID, since we are looping through our values from our query. And that should take care of our zoom to functionality. So let's give that a save and return back to our application. We'll give that a quick test just to make sure that it's behaving properly. So we get our zooms. Now going back to our code, let's fix our width in the CSS file. So we'll set this width to 100% and let's target our rows so they do some hover effect just so it looks nicer. So we'll target our T body and in the T body our table row and let's ignore the first child because the first child is the uh, the header uh, labels, the smart device ID and smart device type and target the hover attribute. And we'll just change the background color to sky blue and our cursor to pointer just to make sure it's obvious. Let's save that, go back to our code, and now you'll see the sky blue on hover. We'll skip the first column uh, row just as we specified, and if we click on them, we'll get our zooms. So working just as expected, and if we scroll our widget, this should expand to the full width now.